Okay, it's, uh, it's Friday, just after 11 o'clock. I'm here with Wanderers manager Mark White for a catch up. How are you doing, Mark? All good, mate. Good stuff, good. Right, let's just uh, let's start things off with um, talking about the game we just had Tuesday night away at South End at Roots Hall. Uh, obviously, we lost the game 2 0. Um, what's, what's your thoughts on it, you know, having reflected? Well, yeah, I, I think pretty much as I saw it, really. I think we. Um... We had the better possession across the 90 minutes, which is no mean feat at Southend. They're a very good possession-based team. We uh, we failed to create um, chances. Uh, our chance creation was low. They had a plus one at the back. I thought um, we didn't. We, we sort of chucked in crosses into their sort of plus one, really, as opposed to... Um, do what we should have done really take players on more um, make box runs which is what we spoke about so yeah good possession um, first half was a good performance I think across the 90 it was a good defensive performance I mean both goals one was a clear foul on George Franken for the first goal so it, it really shouldn't have been a free kick to South End. And then Dan Pivas makes a mistake for the second. So outside of that, there was lots of occasions that they had to defend really well, and they did across the 90. Um, it felt like a bit of a scratch team we put out. I was pretty relaxed because of that. Um, Bowerman, Frankham, McManus, Mewitt, to name a few, arguably Alfie. A lot of boys in there that hadn't played um, anywhere near enough minutes um, and wouldn't be fully fit as well so um, yeah I thought I think in hindsight it weren't an amazing game actually it wasn't an amazing game and we need to remember South End were top they were top seven team in this league um, they really are so I thought if anyone deserved to win it on the day I definitely think they did um, that even though the possession wasn't as good, they created by far the better chances, I think, in the 90 minutes. And um, at 1-0 in that second half, they had us on the rack um, as we tied a little bit. But there were loads of positives. Loads of positives. Um, and, um, yeah, we, we move on to the next game. Yeah, and, and on, on, on the subject of positives, I've got to mention our fans who yeah. you know were phenomenal the other night. They literally, you know, even at two 0 Yeah, brilliant. They didn't I stop mean, I singing, think, did they? I think the fans went there with the sole intention of supporting me and the boys. Um, they went there one hundred percent without, and I could tell from the minute I arrived without any consideration to what the result was going to be. You know, it's important that everyone understands where we've come from, um, and we come from a very low level of football, and we produced all these magnificent moments all across the country and at Meadowbank. You know, it was only our last home game when we had arguably our greatest day um, in club history, really, when you look at that TV Chesterfield win against the champions elect. And so everyone understands where we've come from. They know we're, we're always the underdog and it, well, our, our, our real fans do. And I think they all turned out to basically, um, you know, to sort of stomp their feet and, and say we get it and we're right behind everything we're doing. So that was great to see, much appreciated. And obviously we want a bit more of that in Meadowbank tomorrow. Well, we'll talk about that yeah. in a minute, absolutely. Yeah. So um, now obviously you had a, a, a session with the squad yesterday, game Tuesday, session Thursday. How, how is the squad looking? Any any injury concerns? Yeah, I mean, Joe, Joe Cook would be still, uh, still injured. Um, Briggs, we know, is out for the season now. Um... Harry's obviously, we're nursing Harry, um, he's nowhere near fit, he's, he's just, we want him around it because he's so good for the team and he's got a bad knee, it needs um, a minor op. Um, what else we got? Uh, Frankham would be 50-50 for Tamar because I thought he was great the other night but we had to rest him in order to get him out of that game, he's got, he's got, um, Tendonitis, so he's struggling to get through matches. I think we'll be glad of the rest after Saturday. Um, it's been a busy period, but yeah, um, we've got enough. Listen, we've got enough boys fit. Josh Taylor returning, and obviously, uh, uh, just to take the fund, obviously we're over the moon that he signed a new three-year deal. Um, 
Josh had a, I think I'd, I'd go as far as saying he's, a, he's got to be a top five midfielder in the whole division. Um, Brian Robson-esque for those that are old enough to remember. Box to box and real big engine. Um, chips in with key goals. And yeah, he returned and you know, we're delighted he signed a new deal. Real intention behind not just him but the club and the boys. No matter where we, no matter where we end up, um, we're only going to take the team forward on the field. And I can absolutely assure everybody, 100%, that, that Dorking Wanderers will be a better team next year than it is this year. That is an absolute definite, and that's what matters. We we need to move forward on the field. So um, yeah, what a brilliant. Um, signing uh, in the prime of his career and for those that have been asking questions, he joins Charlie Carter, Dan Pybus, Alfie Rutherford James McShane um, a raft, Tom Blair a raft of players that are already um, in contract next season um, and we look to improve the team uh, continually so Training was good, um, and yeah, we're looking forward to another another home game. We had a real good day last time, so trying a bit more of the same would be nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it actually feels like quite a while ago that we were at home against Chesterfield. We've had three three uh, away days on the bounce. So uh, tomorrow we welcome Sonny Hull Moores to Manor yeah, Bank. Don't go near the M25 if anyone's not. It's shut for the first time apparently night since 1986 during the day. So it'd be carnage. Um, yeah, look, I mean, they've done that thing. They've had a phenomenal start and um, their form's upheld itself. I think the, the new manager's done really well and you have to tip your hat to that. They're a robust team. They work really, really hard. You can see why they're, you can see why they're in the top five in the division. Um, you've only got to look at their work rate, tenacity, um, they're what they stand for as a team. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that they're in the FA Trophy last four, they're like a cup team, that they're that type of mentality. Um, give me a really tough game, in many ways a lot tougher than Chesterfield. Um, but of course, uh, we, uh, we're always worthy favourites really in my book at home, always, and um, the lads, are looking forward to competing. Eight more games, long way to go. We're taking each one at a time and, and this is the next challenge. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned the M25, but just on a, on a positive note, you know, if you've got a sat-nav, there's lots of back, back roads. Oh, and right. I'm not trying to put people off. Yeah. Oh, no, no. No, absolutely not. In stalking. But also on a positive note, the train's running tomorrow. Oh, there you go. And so, we're right uh, near the station, yeah. We've got three stations. We've got Dorking three West, stations. Dorking Deep Dean and Dorking Main. So, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, good there's, point. No, there's no excuses. Three stations and I, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, so, yeah, looking forward to them coming and they've done a great job there and um, what we want to do is that the art of a true supporter is to go, I need to go down to Meadowbank today to support the Wanderers because it's been a tough season and we've only got four home games and we need to pack out that bank. We need to pack it out um, you know, I really noticed those that, you know, for me, what a great club does is support more in times of need, not less. And I'm hoping that, you know, tomorrow we get a big attendance, um, all our regulars make a load of noise, get behind the boys. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, absolutely. And we are expecting a strong crowd. If you haven't got your ticket yet, please get yourself to dwfc.co.uk. It will be a lot quicker than turning yeah. up on the day, trust me, on that one. So um, just a couple of things I'd like to mention, Mark, while I've got you. I just want to give a special mention to the under-16 league boys who uh, won the London County Cup following up on yeah. the Surrey County Cup win they had last year. They beat Lambeth 3-1. Fantastic to be the... Uh, yeah. You know, London County champions and also the elite girls section. Girls, we need to yeah. remember they only started this season and the under 15s, under 16s, yeah. they won their respective Surrey League Cups last weekend as well. So, massive well done to them. It's a fantastic Yeah, I think, I think they're going to um, potentially take the trophy round tomorrow or maybe before the last game, one of the two. Um, and Richard King, Jordan, um, and all of their setup behind the club is significant. We've now announced Richard Webber coming in to our youth development phase. 
Uh, we've got Waleed, bless him, on his hospital bed. Um, it's back tomorrow. Who's back tomorrow? Yeah. Um, ordering people around, which is exactly what we need to see. Um, and yeah, th these guys are doing a great job, and we continue to. Well, I love the fact they've got the winning culture. That's what it's about. But also, we continue to work towards a, a club where we can get youngsters in the first team um, and young girls in the first team as well. Yeah. That's what we're aiming for. So it's great to see. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, a great point to finish. So, Mark, thanks so much for your time. Cheers, mate. Good luck tomorrow, and we'll uh, we'll catch up again next week. Thanks, mate. Cheers.